This video is brought to you by Squarespace. The X30 is a different take on how you can build a very nice mid-ranger. And I think it's all the better for it. The way it differentiates itself is gonna be its biggest selling point as well as being its biggest weakness. And allow me to explain. Your average mid-ranger is obsessed with numbers. Things such as trying to achieve the highest performance benchmark scores, having more cameras, bigger displays, faster charging, and so on. In comparison, the X30 takes an almost completely different approach. It replaces performance benchmarks with build quality and attention to detail that is pretty much unmatched for its price range. It doesn't have the most cameras on the bag, but it has two useful cameras and the software experience that tries to make the most out of both. It doesn't have the fastest charging speed around, but its battery is designed to last for a longer period of time. And you can apply this to almost everything else about the X30. So if you're trying to justify paying about $500 to get the X30 based on its spec sheet alone, you're gonna be left pretty confused. However, picking it up and looking at it turns a light bulb in your head. Using it for a few seconds and things start to make a lot more sense. Then switch on the camera and start capturing images with it and the picture becomes crystal clear. No pun intended. But with that in mind, it's competing in a very competitive segment of the market. So does the X30 manage to justify its existence? But first, here's a word from today's video sponsor. Let's face it, we all thought at least once about starting our own website online. Whether it's to showcase our passions to the world or to build an online business. And Squarespace makes this very simple. With Squarespace, you can build your own website with ease thanks to their excellent custom templates. It's taken me less than an hour to build a site from scratch into something that I'm fairly proud of. I also love how easy it is to build an online store, whether you're planning on selling a physical or a digital good or creating something unique for your community. And once you're ready to go live, Squarespace also provides the perfect analytic tools in order to understand exactly who your target audience is. Anyway, I'm barely scratching the surface here. I would highly recommend going to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. See if you like it, and I'm sure you will, and you can also go to squarespace.com slash Mr. Nokia to get 10% off your first purchase. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. The X30's design and build quality has this aura of refinement that you usually don't see except on ultra premium devices. From its dense and weighty feel in the hand that just screams expensive, to an almost obsessive attention to even the tiniest of details. Look at the chamfered edges for example. They've been applied to almost every single line on this device, including things that you wouldn't even notice. Things such as the tiny camera openings, USB-C port, as well as loudspeaker grills. The edges are made out of 100% recyclable aluminum, and even the camera plate is made out of metal. And yes, a symmetrical back camera design would have definitely looked better, but it's undeniable how nice and stylish the X30 is despite that. The back plate is made out of 60% recycled plastic, and it has this very nice satin finish that makes it look like it's kind of frozen. You can either get it in white, which looks very understated and hides fingerprints really well, or you can get it in cloudy blue, which is a lot more showy and is a very cool combination of gray and blue. I honestly can't decide which one I personally prefer, as I think both of them are nice in different ways. And plus points for going with a metal polycarbonate combination, which I think is the best combination for practicality and durability. And being a Nokia, you definitely know that they didn't skimp out on the durability aspect. So the front, for example, is covered by Gorilla Glass Victus, which does a great job at handling shattering and accidental drops. And the device comes with an IP67 water and dust resistance rating, so even taking it for a swim shouldn't be a problem. So is the hardware perfect? Sadly, it isn't. A quick glance around the device reveals that it lacks a micro SD card extension, so you can't expand the memory, and there's also no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So not only does the X30 match premium devices in its quality, but it also matches them in their quest for snubbing practical features. The other negative is that the camera bump is huge, and if you place the device flat on a surface, it definitely acts like a seesaw. And finally, there's only one bottom firing speaker here. Thankfully though, this is a high quality speaker. It gets really loud and sounds quite full, so there's that. On the front of the X30 is a 6.43 inch AMOLED display with a full HD plus resolution and a 90 hertz refresh rate. 
It also has HDR10 support and comes with pure display, which is Nokia's way of saying that the device changes its color profile based on what you're viewing. So it sort of dynamically enhances the viewing experience. It gets more than bright enough for you to use it outdoors under sunlight, and it comes with all the good qualities they expect from an OLED. From punchy colors, deep blacks, to excellent viewing angles. I also didn't notice any green tint issues or color shifts if viewing the display at an angle. And while the 90Hz refresh rate isn't the fastest in its segment, it definitely helps improve the overall user experience when you're scrolling through the device. It's adaptive too, so it will help save battery life when you don't need the full 90 Hz. I did notice though that switching between 90 Hz and 60 Hz actually results in a slightly different color profile on the display, which is a bit strange. Integrated into the bottom part of the display is a built-in fingerprint reader, and it works as you'd expect. It isn't the best I've used, but it's not bad at all and pretty reliable. I still personally prefer having a side-mounted fingerprint scanner, even if this feels more high-tech. Now in terms of battery life, initially I was slightly concerned because the X30 has a smaller than average 4200mAh battery capacity. And this in part is due to the fact that the X30 is more compact than your average mid-ranger. However, after using the device for over two weeks now, I'm actually getting really good battery life out of the X30. I've crossed the 10 hours of screen time multiple times while I was mainly using the device in Wi-Fi. And with a mix of Wi-Fi and 5G usage, I was getting over 7 hours of screen on time. Now those aren't class leading numbers, but they're stellar nonetheless. It means that you'll be able to easily get a day and a half of usage out of the battery on this thing, and if you're a light user, you can even extend that up to two days of usage. In terms of charging, the X30 can get up to 33 watts of charging speed. I couldn't test this out properly since I don't have a 33 watt compatible charger, but in theory, this should mean that the device should be able to fully charge in just over an hour. And a part of the appeal of the X30 is that Nokia is saying that the battery has been tested to up to 800 recharge cycles while maintaining over an 80% battery health. And this means that you should be able to keep the battery on this device healthy for over three years of usage. It's a nice touch for those of you who favor longevity and want to keep their devices for a longer period of time. Out of the box, the X30 ships with Android 12. And Nokia has one of the least customizable implementations of Android 12. It's as stock as it can get, and the device mainly relies on Google services for all the basic features. Nokia's only additions are a My Device app for support and a camera app. Now the advantages of this approach is that the software is very lightweight, meaning it doesn't require a lot of processing power for it to be fast and run smoothly. It also doesn't come with non-removable duplicate apps and services that run in the background whether you want them to or not. And theoretically, it should be easier to update. Now Nokia is promising to provide three years of OS updates and three years of security updates. And in some markets, the device will come with a three-year warranty. But even though Android 12 has narrowed the feature gap between it and more customizable operating systems, I would have still liked to see Nokia differentiate their operating system a bit more and add some useful features. It's something similar to what Motorola is doing in terms of customization and gestures. A Nokia exclusive icon pack wouldn't hurt either. The device does come with some apps pre-installed such as Netflix and GoPro Quick, but they all can be removed if you don't need them. Time to talk about performance, which is going to be the most controversial aspect of this device. I mean, we've already seen some lazy publications label the X30 overpriced just based on its choice of CPU, without ever telling you why, and as if the only aspect that determines the price is the CPU. So unfortunately, I end up having to do all the legwork in order to explain the positives and negatives of Nokia going with the Snapdragon 695 5G, and how it actually impacts your day-to-day -day experience using the device. Trust me, it isn't something that I enjoy doing, but unfortunately, when laziness is so prevalent, somebody has to step up. And I'll have a very detailed performance video talking about the Snapdragon 695 5G, but for now, here's what you need to know. The day-to-day -day performance on the Nokia X30 is excellent. This is in part due to the Snapdragon 695 5G, as well as the stock lightweight Android 12 experience, which seems to be nicely optimized on this device. And this isn't surprising to me at all when you start looking at the technical details of this processor. It shares the same type of performance and efficiency cores as the Snapdragon 778 Plus though with two performance cores and six efficiency cores versus four and four on its big brother. On average, the 778 Plus is clocked at about 10% higher, but it also shares the same six nanometer architecture process. In practical terms, the day-to-day -day performance should be pretty much identical, with the 778 Plus showing its performance advantage in heavy tasks such as gaming, while the 695 shines in efficiency and generates less heat theoretically. Out of curiosity, I performed a very unscientific speed test. So I put the X30 against the S22 Plus from Samsung to see who would open WhatsApp, Instagram, and Twitter quicker. And both devices were on 5G. And guess what? The X30 managed to open all three apps faster than Samsung's flagship. 
And needless to say, I had a very smug look on my face after that. Take from that test what you will, but I'm sure the Galaxy will be faster if you're trying to launch a game. I tested both the 6 gigs of RAM and 8 gigs of RAM versions of the X30, and their performance, I would say, is pretty much identical. So how well does the X30 handle the maximum performance of its processor? It manages to do quite admirably by giving consistent maximum performance for a long period of time. I can also vouch for the fact that it doesn't get uncomfortably warm even during heavy usage. So the device seems to be well engineered to handle all the power that it has. The CPU throttling test backs up my claim and the device never goes below 85% maximum performance even after 30 minutes of testing. And if you're wondering about gaming, you can still play the vast majority of popular games on the X30 at a decent graphical setting. By default, games such as Call of Duty Mobile run at high settings. And the game runs fairly smoothly, so you can only blame yourself if you start losing. I would personally avoid playing games such as Genshin Impact, which require the very best hardware in order for it to run smoothly. Though generally speaking, if you're into gaming, the X30 shouldn't be at the top of your shopping list. Now for the part you've all been waiting for, the camera. And the X30 comes with a purely branded camera setup on the back. So the main camera is a 1 over 1.56 inch 50 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization and an f1.88 aperture. The device also has Gorilla Glass DX+, Plus, which theoretically should allow up to 98% of all light to enter into the sensor. So it's nice to see that Nokia didn't cut any corners here, as this same sensor is found on the Galaxy S22 series. Although the secondary camera, which is a 13 megapixel ultra-wide camera, isn't as technically impressive. And there are no filler cameras here, which is something that I really appreciate. Though more expensive devices will come with a telephoto camera for zoom shots. Nokia uses their PureView moniker on their best imaging devices. And even though the X30 isn't as revolutionary as its ancestors, which completely changed the landscape of smartphone photography, it is, in my opinion, the best point-and-shoot camera solution that Nokia has come up with so far. I will have a dedicated camera video talking about the X30 in absolute details, but for now, here's what you need to know. The X30's camera produces excellent images in both daylight and low light. The images have a fairly accurate color science, plenty of resolved details even after cropping, and the software is neither too aggressive with noise reduction or over sharpening. The HDR effect might seem a bit too aggressive at times, but this also helps the device capture impressive dynamic range, and it's very easy to correct this in post-processing. If you prefer more contrasty images, switching off HDR helps quite a bit. And the new camera app on the X30 offers a lot of nice options in order to capture the perfect shot. The only time I found myself switching to Gcam is to capture indoor pictures of my pets, where the artificially enhanced sharpness makes for better cat pictures. But other than that, I was sticking to the Nokia stock camera app. The most impressive aspect of the main camera though is its low light capabilities. If you get this, I would highly recommend using the dedicated night mode. It captures bright and sharp images even under just the moonlight. Now for the ultra wide camera, and even though this isn't as technically impressive as the main sensor found on the X30, Nokia uses something called Capture Fusion, which combines between the images captured with the main camera and the ultra wide camera for better details in the center of the ultra wide images. And it works very nicely on the X30. But anyway, here are things I would like to see improved for the camera on this device. I would have liked to see a contrast and sharpness sliders in the camera app. The phone has something called automatic night mode, which activates when you're capturing images, when the device thinks that you're in a low light situation. And in my opinion, it just doesn't offer the same consistency as the dedicated night mode. It also sometimes activates when I don't want it to. And even though it's a pretty useful feature, I ended up switching it off. Anyway, I plan on testing the X30 against more expensive devices. And I do have a feeling that it's definitely gonna make them sweat. As for the front facing camera, the phone has a 16 megapixel sensor and it also uses pixel binning so you end up with four megapixel images. The images produced look perfectly fine for social media, though I'm not personally a fan of the new super portrait mode which adds a bit too much beauty effect to the eyes. Now unlike the phone's imaging capabilities, the X30's video capabilities left me feeling a bit underwhelmed. And it isn't due to lack of features as there are a lot of modes for you to get really creative. So the phone has cinema mode which offers pro controls for video, you have ultra stable video, which uses the ultra wide camera in order to capture action footage. There is also the ability to capture slow motion video and speed warp. Now due to a chipset limitation, the phone can't capture 4K video. So you're limited to up to 1080p at 60 frames per second. 
And while this is a bummer for me personally, I don't think it's a deal breaker for many people. However, the quality of the 1080 video is average at best, which is the disappointing part for me. It's a bit too soft for my liking, and a part of that is because the phone wants to capture brighter footage, and therefore opts for a higher ISO. And this adds a bit of noise to the output. I found myself constantly trying to adjust the brightness to reduce it just a bit, and I found that the result of this was much better video quality. Software stabilization works well enough though, and the audio quality captured is excellent. Autofocus on the other hand isn't as smooth as I would have liked to see and I think it really should be slowed down a little bit. But yeah, for a content creator such as myself I would have definitely liked to see better quality video. The gap is still way too big with the iPhone, which is still the gold standard when it comes to capturing video. In terms of call quality and connectivity, I can't really say that I faced any issues with the X30. The phone also comes with eSIM support alongside dual SIM card support, which is a nice touch for future-proofing the device and it's quite a unique feature in this segment. Quality over quantity. In my opinion, that's probably the best way to describe the Nokia X30. It's pretty refreshing to see a premium mid-ranger that's focused on imaging capabilities as well as high-quality craftsmanship, as opposed to the typical approach for this segment, which favors performance and numbers. I think this uniqueness alone justifies the X30's existence and makes it stand out in an ultra-competitive segment. So should you buy it? I think that completely depends on your priorities. If you're into gaming, for example, there are more capable devices for the same amount of money. And if you don't care about the build quality and imaging aspects, you're better served with the Nokia G60, which offers very similar performance for significantly less money. But for those who appreciate quality and willing to pay for it, I think the Nokia X30 is a very easy device to love. It's gonna be my personal daily driver despite its flaws. And I also think that it's a milestone device for the brand. A device that has the potential to showcase what Nokia used to stand for once upon a time, from its build quality to its imaging capabilities. And I hope they continue to reiterate and improve on this formula because in my opinion, it's a winning one. Just a quick personal update, this is gonna be the last video that you see captured in the studio that I've built up over the last two years. I'm gonna be moving into a makeshift studio until I can find the right place that I can really build up and make it the perfect place to work and capture awesome footage for you guys. Thanks to everybody who supported me through my YouTube journey and I hope I continue to live up to your expectations. I actually made a video a while ago about how I think the ultimate mid-ranger from Nokia should be and the X30 ticks most of the boxes that I had in that video. So do check it out here, or check out my unboxing and impressions video of the Nokia G60 here. Thank you guys very much for watching. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one.